Should this former undercover Met police officer who slept with three women during his work be prosecuted for sexual offences? The Crown Prosecution Service says no, but one of the women he had a six-month relationship with says yes, and a judicial review will today begin at the High Court to establish whether it was right that he wasn't prosecuted. Jim Boiling was working as part of the now disbanded Special Demonstration Squad sent to infiltrate an activist group that Monica, not her real name, was a member of in the late 90s. When his actions became public, he was sacked, never prosecuted, because what he did was part of the job. The Metropolitan Police Force has apologised for what happened. Monica says that's not good enough and has chosen to share her story about being one of those women. She wants to remain anonymous. Well, in the late 90s, I was involved in environmental direct action, trying to raise awareness about climate change. Um, and one of my fellow activists was a na man named Jim Sutton. Um, I liked him, we got on okay, he seemed to like me. He showed signs that he liked me. And we commenced a relationship for about six months. So I would say in that relationship, we kind of were friends before and I still maintain positive contact with him after that relationship. Mm. And then in 2011, I found out that he wasn't Jim Sutton. He was actually a Metropolitan Police officer called Jim Boylan, and he'd been paid to infiltrate our group and um, report on us, really. But also, I mean, the thing was, he was um, one of the main activists of that group from the time of my relationship till he left that group at the beginning of 2000. So it's, it's kind of curious that the police are infiltrating groups on that level. Mm. Um, and when you found out that he wasn't who he said he was, mm -hmm. that in fact he was working undercover for the Metropolitan Police, what, uh, what was your reaction? What impact did that have on you? Initially, I think it's shock. Um, and then it's like, like with any explosion, the pieces fall back slow. Well, they fall back quite quickly, but it seems quite slowly. And so it changes everything. And I look back on that relationship and... I can feel really, really insecure about it because I think on some level there was a part of him that was mocking me. There was a part of him that didn't respect the ideologies that were motivating me and the people I was working with. As actually, um, they actually call us wearies in their tradecraft manual where they say, you know, they explain to each other how it's best to infiltrate these groups because they think our ideals are so wearisome. So that's very hurtful, very and traumatic. You were totally and utterly deceived by him. Yeah, I was violated. Violated? Yeah, I think so. I think that the whole... When you're a person who's motivated to create positive social change and you really believe that if we work together, we can maybe improve things, and then somebody comes along who pretends to be what you are, that's, that's your core part. Mm -hmm. You know, believing that you share a common goal is really intrinsic in who you're intimate with. There's, a, there's a, light, a meeting of minds. And so the fact that he was the opposite of what he said he was, he wasn't just a single agent, he was employed by the state and was reporting back. It's a terrible violation. I was a young woman at the time. If you'd have known he was an undercover officer working for the Metropolitan Police, would you have embarked on a relationship with him? Of course not. I would never have met him. There would have never have been that. It would just never have ever happened. And if I'd known his motivations for being in my life, of course I would never, ever have wanted to be intimate with him. I don't want revenge. I want answers. I want truth. I want the Metropolitan Police to be accountable. I think that's what we all want. Um, I think it's very difficult for that institution to be accountable. It seems to be anyway. Let me bring uh, lawyer Harriet Wistrich in, who is representing you at this judicial review. Um, what, do you, what are you going to argue that Jim Boiling and others should be prosecuted with and why? OK, so there's um, two potential offences um, that... Um, well, one, one is a sexual offence uh, and, and the equivalent of rape, that, that, that basically he deceived as to his identity uh, and that deceit vitiated consent that was given to sexual intercourse. Uh, and uh, the other is that this was um, a form of misconduct in public office. So a public officer who abuses his position and breaks all the, the, the rules that are given um, is, it, it 
you know, if it's serious enough, can be found guilty of a, a criminal offence. He was sacked. Um, he was sacked subsequently to the decision made by the CPS, mm -hmm. so it's not something we directly rely on in this case, but clearly that's an indicator of how serious um, this misconduct was taken. The CPS <coughs> say they considered whether there was sufficient evidence to uh, go forward with charges of rape or indecent assault, procuring a woman to have mm -hmm. sexual intercourse by false pretenses, misconduct in public office and breaches of the official Secrets Act. And they say they really carefully considered all the available evidence and at the end of a thorough investigation, they decided there is insufficient evidence for a realistic prospect of conviction mm -hmm. for any of those offences. Yeah. Well, um, that, that's what they say. We, we, we initiated a victim's right of review in Monica's case and also in the case of a previous woman. What's important to know is that Boiling, like some of the other officers, was a serial offender, if you like. He had relationships, long-term intimate sexual relationships with three different women during his five-year period that he was um, infiltrating these uh, Reclaim the Streets uh, group, mm -hmm. environmental protest group. And uh, during that time... He used all the um, trappings that were given to him to hide his identity because uh, he was an officer of the state to uh, either gratify himself or to use, um, use the, that, um, those trappings to gather further intelligence. We don't know the answer as to whether, whether it was simply a gratification or, or a uh, intelligence gathering process. But we do know that the Met have said that the relationships were wrong yeah. and they've apologised to the women mm -hmm. involved and warned that any future officer who had a sexual relationship with someone they were targeting risked prosecution yeah. and acknowledged that women had suffered a violation of their rights. Yes, they did and that, that, that is something that we rely on because the Met Police made this very strong statement saying that under no circumstances should these relationships occur. If that's the case, why, why is he not guilty of misconduct in public office? And obviously we'll let you know what the High Court says. In a statement, the Metropolitan Police say, the historical work, deployment and actions of officers within the now disbanded Special Demonstration Squad and the National Public Order Intelligence Unit will be fully explored and scrutinised by the undercover policing inquiry. The Met Police Service is providing every assistance so that the inquiry can fully address the key issues it's identified. We're completely committed to equality, professionalism and treating everyone who comes into contact with the police with dignity and respect.